Hello girls, guys, or otherwise, this is Rich, and um, a couple things here. For one, sorry about the lighting, the lighting is terrible. I am actually down in uh, Dover, Delaware, where I am doing my monthly um, military weekend. Uh, we are actually having a uh, military weekend this weekend, where we are going to be masked up the entire day, which is um, kind of different for me because the day-to-day -day that I have at work is already in an office, socially distanced and whatnot. So kind of a different uh, thing for me to have a mask on all day because we're in the middle of a pandemic and that's the thing that needs to happen. However, uh, I wanted to get this at least recorded. Hopefully I can get this video edited and uploaded um, by the end of tonight, uh, being Friday, whenever I'm filming this, and have it released on Saturday. And it is currently seven o'clock, so hopefully I can get everything edited and uploaded and everything's all peachy keen and you guys and I um, can maintain on a usual schedule. So before we get into chapter nine, uh, go on down into the bottom bar, go ahead and uh, click the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done that. Uh, it really helps appease the algorithmic gods of YouTube. All hail the algorithmic gods of YouTube. So. Be sure to do that. Um, and also leave a comment on it, you know, how you're progressing with this book. If you are enjoying the lessons, if you don't like these lessons, you know, this is really a book club, back and forth, a discussion of sorts. And um, this is just me giving my part of it. If you happen to record a video response and touch on some of these points, um, let me know and I will go watch your video. But anyway, let's get, go to chapter eight at the very end where we have our assignments and let's review the assignments. Uh, this was a long chapter, chapter eight was. And Christopher Penzak gave us, what was it, six, seven different exercises to do. I have had a long, long, busy week this week. I will freely admit that I did not do the exercises. Um, and I, I do apologize for that. I said I was going to do the exercises and you know what, life uh, got in the way. A lot of these I have done before, so it's, they're, they're pretty common exercises that I have seen before. Uh, do the symbol meditation, which is one that I really wanna do, so I really want to do that meditation and I have not done that, but that is something that I really want to try because it seems like a very, very beneficial meditation. Uh, and the neutralization, um, haven't really done that because I don't have that many negative things that come towards me. Let me see if I can adjust that light a little bit more. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, at least it lights me up, but I have the backlighting from these lights on the sides of the bed and whatnot. Anyway, moving on. Uh, and then we had, let's see, daily journal, writing three pages. Again, the week has been a week from hell. I've been getting in half to a full page on a good day and you know what my thing is is with my new year's resolution of journaling more and trying to get to a daily journaling thing and that is bouncing light all over the place there we go um at least i'm journaling more than what i was which is something that i did want to do so i'm still accomplishing my goal of doing journaling, I'm just not journaling as much as is prescribed by this book. Um, focus on regular meditation practice at least three times a week, if not daily. Uh, yeah. Um, part of my meditation practice is actually saying the rosary, which is part of my uh, Lent, my, my 
not something I'm giving up, but something I'm taking up for Lent. And that is something I'm doing for Lent. So I have only missed one day. And even though it doesn't make up for it, I prayed the rosary twice uh, the next day. So yeah, and then using instant magic. I use magic when I need it. I, I, don't, I don't usually do little magic things. Like uh, I know some people will, you know, use magic to find a parking spot and whatnot. I don't usually do that. Um, I, I'm like, you know what? I, I I don't need to resort to my magic just to find a parking spot. If there's one there, there's one there. It's not something that I feel that I need to call on the energy of the universe to find me a parking spot. I'm not saying that it's bad for other people to do it, just not something that I regularly do. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get into chapter nine. This is lesson five, The Art of Defense. This chapter is a relatively easy going chapter, not terribly long, uh, 167 to, uh, I think it's 179, right? Yes, so what, 12 pages? Not that bad. And I have, uh, what is this, Mint Medley, I think? Yes, Mint Medley by Bigelow T. So, let me take a drink and we'll get on into Chapter 9, Lesson 5. Please turn your books to Chapter 9, Lesson 5. Okay. Okay, we're all set. He starts off with, One of the most frequently asked questions I get about witchcraft is, can't something bad happen when you do this stuff? Again, a good opening, not his strongest opening, but a good opening to the chapter. This is one that it has been so misconstrued, and he even goes into it um, with Hollywood and you know TV, movies, all that stuff, where it's been misconstrued that just because you do witchcraft or you do this or that, um, something bad is going to happen. A bad rap has been given to both witchcraft and Ouija boards, especially Ouija boards. So many people think that they are completely evil. Even some witches out there think that they are completely evil. My thing is, it is a tool, and depending on how you use it, determines what outcome you will have. So that is uh, something that came to mind whenever reading this just this first sentence out the gate. And then he goes on to say, uh, later on in uh, down the page here, because of monster movies and stereotypical witch stories, many people who do not condemn witchcraft to the realm of nonsense think that there is a monster or demon hiding behind every corner waiting to get them. Going to the very bottom of that paragraph, protection, magic, and psychic. Uh, self-defense skills alleviate your fears and bring balance. A couple things in this. Okay. Um, there is a point whenever you should not be worrying about the things that could happen. I would rather worry about things that are more uh, capable of happening than the what-ifs. If you get lost in the what ifs, you're going to go around in circles until you just don't do anything with your practice. Um, when you are too scared to do a spell or something because of the repercussions that it may have. Um, and I think that's a big thing to note here is that uh, you have power to make sure that certain things happen in a certain manner you have the power and the capability of making sure things follow a set uh, plan. And let me see if I can turn this fan off. I, let me just turn that off. Okay. I, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I can hear it. There's a fan going on in this room and I'm trying to turn it off. Um, at the thermostat here right next to the desk in the hotel room because it is loud. And I don't know if you can hear the whirling it, it, itself down. I, I don't know. Anyway, we're going to move on from that. 
Protection magic and self-defense skills alleviate the fears and bring balance. Absolutely. I do agree with him on this. Um, I think one of the first things that people who are just coming into a magical practice is learning the protection spells. Uh, learning how to meditate and do protection. Um, you know, setting up your defenses and whatnot. Because there are going to be times whenever you feel like you are... Uh, kind of uh, attacked or being targeted and I think it is very important to have these things at your disposal to just call up at any given time. Moving on because we have a lot of things to cover here. Mystics from many traditions are often portrayed as spiritual warriors battling for the well-being of the community. Mystics are not necessarily aggressors or conquerors, but they know how to how to defend and protect themselves. Like martial arts, the emphasis is not on provoking a battle, but safely diffusing a threat, often using your enemy's strengths and weaknesses against them. Very important. Um, I, I would say that you don't go out looking for trouble. Um, and I think that's kind of what he's getting to here, is that you don't go out looking for trouble, but whenever trouble does find you, um, that you are ready to defuse the situation, that you're, you are ready and willing to, uh, to damper down the situation so that, you know, you aren't getting hurt, that nothing bad does happen to you. So standing at the ready and being ready to answer that call if or when it comes up, is important. However, you don't need to go looking for it and being an aggressor or a conqueror. Um, I, I know there are certain people that are called to go out and uh, be like, uh, how do I wanna say, advocates for the spiritual or to conquer certain spiritual aspects in order to help the living. Um, one person that's coming to mind is Miriam Winkowski, who will literally go and clear out a home and whatnot for people. She will talk to whoever or whatever is there. Uh, I believe she only sees ghosts. Uh, she's the person that the Ghost Whisperer was based upon and whatnot but she will literally go to somebody's house and be like, okay, you, your ghost, you need to get out of this house and whatnot. She is being called to do that. Um, I don't think she necessarily goes out looking for it. Um, and there's something to be said about uh, the ghost hunters out there that go looking for situations in order to have a hostile spirit and that word is stop doing it you're an idiot but whenever you are called to go to a house to do a cleansing to do uh, a clearing of a house that you are ready and willing to take that up uh, if that is something that you are willing to do for for people um, so yeah I think he makes a good a good point here that you don't just, you don't go looking for trouble. But if trouble finds you or you are called to help somebody that is in trouble, then you are ready to answer that call. Important. A um, couple paragraphs down, this type, um, he's talking about um, negative or uh, not so nice beings. Um, he says this type of energy has many sources. Uh, or negative sources uh, or un, unwanted sources. Anyway, he says uh, this type of energy has many sources. Um, the most usual is what people call negative energy, although I don't use that term, which was mentioned in chapter 8. I prefer the words harmful, unbalanced, dense, heavy, or discordant energy. Um, he's talking about that it's not always a ghost that's in your house. Sometimes it is energy that is residual, that is left there because of anger or uh, frustration or 
you know, something like that. So it's energy that has manifested itself there. He goes on to say, many, put, many people put harmful thoughts or words, or many people put out harmful thoughts and words all the time. Sometimes such energy builds up subtly. Psychically uh, sensitive people have difficulty with this energy and usually do not understand it. It can figuratively trap people, often in a cage of their own making. Certain environments, such as unhappy homes and offices, promote this energy and you get um, used to, to it being part of the background noise of your environment. So, um, yeah, this is, I would say, what most times happens. You go into a, a place where it just feels blah and you walk in there you're like wow why does it feel so dense it feels like i'm i'm walking through cement this is not right and a lot of it is because of emotions that people have put into this one little area and it hasn't been cleared out uh, everything just stays there it's like stagnant and bad memories and everything like that and it kind of just sticks to the wall and you can't see there's a wall here but it kind of sticks to the wall, and in order to get that out, you need to clean it out. You need to aggressively remove it. So, it can be a lot easier said than done, but it can be done. And then he says, next there are malicious intent. There is a malicious intent with uh, people who actually know and understand that magic is real, but do not care. Somewhere along the line, they discovered this through traditional magical training books or just discovering their own power. Unfortunately, they do not. They did not discover the law of three. If you meet people, or if you meet such people, you will probably see the return of their harm much more apparently than they do, though some are aware and do not care. Um, again, not usually the case. Um, this is a lot more rare. To find somebody that is purposefully doing harm to others is a lot more rare of a thing than, um, than what most people think. Uh, I know there are some people like, oh, so-and-so sent this to me and I sent this to them. It's like, you just got into a battle. You don't even know for sure if it was them. And if it was, just stay away from them for one, put up your shields and get on with your life. Cut them out, cut the cord. Um, put them in the freezer, put them in a, in a mirror box and get over it. We're gonna cover some of that here in a minute um, or in a little bit. So let's move on. About midway on page 169, the most important thing is to check your own consciousness to make sure that you are not the root of the problem and you are not seeking to blame someone or something else. Self-awareness and introspection are key to this knowledge, hence the journaling and meditation. Ask yourself why you are drawing this experience to you in the first place, regardless of who instigated it. So this is important here. Um, Sometimes whenever people think that somebody else has sent them this, that, or the other thing, sometimes it's their own doing. And, um, yeah, a lot of people don't like to take ownership of that because they think, well, it couldn't be me. I would never do this to myself. But subconsciously, you might have. So definitely keep those things in mind. And, um, yeah meditate on it make sure it's not your fault in any way before you start slinging spells towards somebody be responsible with your magic um at the bottom many many people unwittingly cause attacks um here he's talking about um oh he's going into energy vampires uh people cause it attacks because of their nature and behavior known as in magical circles as energy vampires these people are low very low on energy and drain others 
of their vitality and emotion. Going down a couple sentences here or a sentence here. Most energy vampires are not aware of their behavior. They are people who have been depressed and realize that when they are near certain energetic people, they feel more energized. Uh, for, they feel more up and, and energized. They think they are being cheered up and do not notice that those around them feel trained. They do not find their energy from in, an internal source, but from others. As their lives change, many people snap out of this pattern. Some learn to understand it and either relish it or find themselves addicted to it, even though they want to change. So a little something on the energy vampires. Some people are very aware of it. Some people, they just suck the life out of you. And I think we all know somebody like that. That, you know, you love them, but you kind of just want them at arm's length because being near them makes you physically exhausted. Um, where you just go, you you walk away from them and you're like, Boy, did I just go 10 rounds? Wow, what the hell? And, you know, they're walking around just fine. And you come home and you're like, I, I really, really have to take it, you know, take a nap, go to bed for the night uh, because I'm exhausted. Those are the energy vampires. Again, a lot of them don't realize that they do this. The ones that do this and are aware of it um, hopefully they are a little bit more, um, responsible. And there are some that are very responsible. There are some people out there who are energy vampires and they will purposely have somebody that they will go to and say, Hey, I need to feed some, feed some energy from you. And their friend is like, okay, sure. Because I'm high energy as it is. Take as you need. So anyway. I did want to um, take note of another author that uh, and another resource that he points out here. He says, in modern magic, author Donald Michael Craig calls, mo calls the most common of these entities little nasties. Um, I just want to give a nod to the modern magic uh, book. Nice book. Do enjoy it. Um, maybe we'll work through that on a, um, on a witchy book club, uh, series in the future, if that's something that you would like to do. Um, or would you like to continue in the, uh, Temple of Witchcraft series? I mean, this is a big series, um, big undertaking. If you would like, we can either go to the Outer Temple of Witchcraft or, um, we can go to another book and then go back to the Outer Temple however you guys want to do it. Uh, right now I have scheduled for the Outer Temple, but I haven't read through it and uh, done the videos, so there's still time to change our minds on it. Um, and we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven weeks-ish before we actually have to make a decision on this. I think it's seven weeks, I think. I don't know. Anyway, we have some time before we have to make a final decision on this, so, in the meantime, go ahead and think about it. And if you want to go to the Modern Magic book, we can go through those lessons uh, through that book. And uh, that is high magic or ceremonial magic. So it is a good book from what I've read and whatnot. I've kind of skipped through that book, but I do enjoy it. And we can go through that book if that's something that you guys want to do because I'm really enjoying doing this series. And um, I think maybe after this book, we need to give Christopher Penzak a break for a little bit because I'm going to eviscerate some of his argument here in the, in the next couple pages. Um, yeah, just, just a little, just a little, little bit. Anyway, we're gonna move on. Let me know in the comments below if you wanna go to a different book or if you wanna continue on the Temple series. Either way, it doesn't matter to me. I do enjoy Christopher Penzek and I do respect him. So um, I just disagree with some of his viewpoints here and there. 
Anyway, we're going to move on to page 171, uh, where he says, when you first do magical work, most of these entities will probably not take much notice. As you build your power, it's like turning on a light switch for the first time. Entities come to check, on, check out the new change, but usually leave. Um, and that's something to notice, is that just because there's like little nasties or little spiritual en entities around, doesn't necessarily mean <clears throat> that they are out to get you. Calm down, put your shields up, be protected, you're okay, it'll be fine. Just don't overreact. Anyway, and I think we get into part, parts of that here in a minute. Um, on the top of page 172, he says, Mystics can encounter entities that are trapped in, it, in more harmful emotions like anger and fear. They may be spirits of those who were physical once and died, creating a ghost. Some feel that ghosts make links to people and places and that meant something to them, anchoring them to the world. Most of my personal ghost busting, ex ghost busting experience, he has that in quotes, um, have not been disincarnate beings, but a buildup of harmful energy. Like I was saying earlier, most of this is because it, it's something that has stuck to the walls and nobody's cleaned it. Going down to the next paragraph, ultimately these disincarnate beings are seeking attention if you in fact have disincarnate beings. Um, are seeking attention and have uh, discovered that fear gets them the most attention. Your attention feeds them power and one of the best ways to get rid of them is to no longer fear them. Use uh, the banishing pentagrams, uh, use the shielding technique described at the end of this chapter, but most importantly, do not be afraid, which is much easier said than done, I know. Um, big thing here is don't be afraid of them because the more energy that you give to them, the more that they can actually do. And, you know, they, that's what they want is they want your energy. And depriving them of that energy is something that will actually dissipate them a lot. A lot easier, a lot quicker, a lot sooner. Moving on, the last source of attacks is you. If you think you are cursed or under attack, the universe will respond in that way. As you study witchcraft, you gather your personal power and learn to direct the energy around you. If you set these talents subconsciously against yourself, you will find that you are the most formidable enemy there is. Awareness is protection. Of being, being aware of what you are doing, um, how you might be doing it, even subconsciously, is something to keep in mind, especially whenever you are, are just starting out. Um, with time, it becomes second nature that, you know, this is just something I do, and you know, you, you learn to rein in certain thoughts and make sure that you uh, subdue your thinking to certain things that will only benefit you. But whenever you are uh, just starting out, it's a little bit more difficult, at least for me it was, uh, to make sure that you were thinking the right thoughts that led to the right conclusions and, that, you know, that everything had a certain set flow and then he goes into protection charms. As you learned with the law of symbolism, many magical symbols have power beyond <clears throat> our conscious knowledge and have been used throughout the ages for protection, such as the Triquetra. And then he goes into a whole bunch of them here, and I'm not gonna read uh, spot for spot, but I am going to jump down to the third paragraph on the page. Other natural substances have power and protection in them. Certain minerals and stones are well known for their protective properties. Um, and then he also mentions salt, uh, which absorbs discordant energy. Iron grounds harmful energy. I'm paraphrasing this paragraph uh, 
if you don't know. Um, iron grounds harmful energy like a lightning rod, dark crystals like obsidian, smoky quartz, onyx are protective, fluorite, usually a green, pink, uh, or purple stone, helps amplify your energy field to create a protective boundary or border. It also cleanses your energy field of harmful energy like an energy purifier. Let me just see what's, okay. I got an alert on my phone, just to make sure it's not something urgent. Um, moving on at the top of the next paragraph, he says, before you carry talisman or stone, you should cleanse it and consecrate it for your intent. And he goes into some ways that you can do that. Um, and then he talks about preparation, just as you um, prepare for a car drive by checking the gas and making sure that the oil is changed regularly, preparation work is done before magic or meditation as, um, or to assure a more pleasant spiritual journey. Okay. Simple things. Uh, getting a ritual bath. And, um, like he says in here, lighting a candle can be a preparation that you take. Uh, for me, like, whenever I am praying the rosary at the altar. Sometimes I'm I'm walking and saying it, sometimes I'm standing and saying it, whatnot. But whenever you're doing that, um, for me, like in the situation of praying the rosary, when I kneel, that is a preparation step. If I choose to light a candle or an incense, terrific, fine. You know, I can do without it, certainly. But it is that preparation of kneeling. If I'm walking around doing it, um, it's the very first step of the rosary is doing the, the cross on yourself. Um, that is a form of protection um, or of preparation. It's also a form of protection, but in this sense, it's also a form of preparation. You are preparing yourself for saying the rosary um, for a holy experience of you know, sharing space with the divine in that time and space. Um, so yes, something to be said for preparing for uh, a certain situation, such as uh, meditation or energy work, spell work, what have you. So moving on, <clears throat> on page 175, he says, look to use natural incense products in your work because they carry a higher energy. Synthetics might smell nice, smell as nice, but they do not hold the same magic. Charge incense for protection before using it. I have thoughts on this, and I wanna cover this more in uh, a Witchy Wednesday video. So do stay tuned on, on Witchy Wednesdays. I think I'm gonna make that the very next uh, uh, Witchy Wednesday because yeah, I do have thoughts on this. And um, yeah, I was going to, to do something else, but because I'm down here again next week, I think I might do my Witchy Wednesday video um, on Saturday, whenever you guys are watching this. So I have that prepared. Anyway, just a little, little peek behind the curtain. Anyway, we're going to move on here. <clears throat> and he, he says, after that paragraph, last step of banishing pen is to use the banishing pentagram in the, the direction of the four walls and the ceiling and the blow on the floor. And sometimes I think that's a little overkill. For me, whenever you do a circle, once it... If you are doing a circle, and I do, like I've said in the past, I do an energy circle, and I will make a ball of energy. I will throw it around, and it'll come back, and it'll gather here, and then, like, the entire circle will then glow. And then whenever that happens, it also makes a bubble. So the bottom and the top all come down, and it makes a big ball, like a hamster wheel. So I do a a ball or an energy circle while I'm sitting there. And I do that quite often. 
I don't see the need in doing the banishing uh, pentagram every single time, or the, yeah, the banishing pentagram every single time that I'm going to do a meditation. To me, for me in my practice, that seems a little overkill, just for a meditation. Moving on, he talks about spirit, spiritual guardians. Many spiritual traditions have some form of guardian or protector spirit. For some, it is a popular guardian, guardian angel. Tribal traditions take the form of an animal. You may feel it as an ancestor or deity. Yes, me. Um, the duty of this non-physical being is to aid in your protection physically, um, magically, and even or psychically, magically, and even physically, yes. Okay. Lot, lots of uh, P, uh, P words in there. Physically, psychically. Anyway. My brain thing is running low on energy. Maybe vampires? No. It was a drive down here. It's a two-hour drive. It was a drive. With not a lot of sleep. So anyway. Then he goes into shielding, and um, I'm not going to read a whole bunch on shielding. He does give a protection shield uh, exercise here, and this is like envisioning yourself in a crystal. I usually do a bubble meditation. Again, I'll send the, the ball of energy around, and it'll make a circle, and then it'll make a ball. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I do, like, um, a lot of times whenever I'm doing meditation or something like that, I'll do the energy circle. Anyway, um, more often than not, if I am just out and about and I feel like a weird energy, I will just stick my hand out and I will make almost like a, it's almost like a latex bubble that I'm just like trapped in. Yet I can maneuver just fine. It's like one of the big um, uh, chemical suits that you, you know, people would, like a hazmat suit. So I basically will have one of those on, you know, psychically or energetically. And yeah, I'm almost like a pod person. But that's what I would do more than doing the crystal one. Just to be honest. Anyway. Moving on to page 177, a popular defense is to visualize mirrors all around you, returning harm back to the sender. But I cannot recommend this technique at all, which is vowed to never do harm, but mirrors purposely send harm, send back harm to someone. Okay, I do have thoughts. Um, if you watched the Witchy Wednesday video, that I did this past week, I talk about a reverse mirror box, which is basically this concept. And I don't have a problem with sending energy back to sender. If somebody is sending negative energy towards me, they're gonna get it right back. And they get what's coming to them. I'm not purposely doing anything, I'm being passive about it. Um, I may not even know that it's actually happening, and that's okay with me, but I, I'm not going to sit there and neutralize their energy every single time that's coming towards me, if it's coming towards me. I'm just going to put up my, my protections, and I'm going to let it just bounce around as it needs to, and it will find its target. Um, he does go into here, in, in here about... You know, what if somebody gets caught in the crosshairs? I I give a little bit more credit to energy than that, or to universe than that. And if somebody is sending something to me, and I'm saying return to sender on all notices, it's like a, an, an automatic reply for an email. You know, just because somebody sends me an email and it automatically replies does not mean somebody's going to get caught in the crosshair. And... Uh, intercept the email that was meant for somebody else. Um, I don't think that's how energy necessarily works whenever it comes to uh, to magic and spellcraft and whatnot. I don't think that's how energy necessarily travels. 
and I think it will settle on the intended target, uh, which in this case would be the one who sent it, you know, the one who smelt, smelt it, dealt it. So, anyway. <clears throat> he uh, says in the, let's see, couple paragraphs down, do not limit this shield to yourself. You can program energy around anything to act as a defense. Every, uh, everything has energy, sorry, everything has an energy field, even if it's not a living being. And that is correct. You can put it around your house, around your car, run around your, you know, favorite mug, which not my favorite, but pretty damn good. I'll tell you this, at four o'clock I made this tea and it is still piping hot. It's almost eight o'clock. So yeah, I love this, this cup. It's made by Thermos, not sponsored. And then he talks about wards and uh, how you can set up wards and whatnot. And that's a more old school term. I kind of love that terminology of wards. I think it is just a cool word, and I just wanted to say that. But same concept as protecting yourself, protecting your car or anything like that. Um, very, you know, easy and purposeful thing to do uh, to make sure that you, yourself, and your possessions and all those around you are safe. Um, and then on 178... Uh, other forms of protection include casting magical circle or doing uh, specific binding spells when someone means you harm. Again, I put them in a box, put them in the freezer, something like that. Um, both topics uh, go beyond the scope of this work as a foundation course, but will be dealt with in the sequel to this book. So that ends out my little ramblings on this uh chapter nine <clears throat> so assignments exercise 20 uh do exercise 20 and put that in your book of shadows again this is an exercise that i probably will not be doing um because i have my own protection bubble you know hazmat suit type pod thing that i do it's hard to describe it but it works for me um I I may try the crystal one, the crystal protection, and I think you know what I might I might just try that tonight, um, maybe I, I'm not promising anything. I I don't want to make any huge promises, sweeping declarations or any, anything like that because that just sets me up for failure. Um, I may try that and see how it goes, um, and, but I'm so used to doing the. Uh, like the pod or the the uh, hazmat suit type thing that it has become second nature for me to do that so it would be a little bit difficult for me to change gears on something like that and then he says uh, continuing the assignments daily journal three pages okay I am having a hard time doing three pages a day because it takes me a long time to write that many pages um, if I can get one page done a day, I'm good. Um, page and a half, even better. If I can get two whole pages, fantastic. Fantastic. I'm not going to, um, necessarily have to stick myself to a three page minimum. Um, would I like to write three pages? Yes, I would but I don't always have the time whenever I'm busy. Do remember, uh, whenever you're going through this and if you're beating yourself up because you're not doing all the exercises and everything, this book was meant to be done in a year's time and we are going through it um, within like three months or something like that. So do, uh, do give yourself a break. I think, uh, let's see. If we actually have seven chapters left, three, six, seven, eight, eight chapters left, it looks like. Anyway, so yeah, this might take us in, does it take us into, I think it stops in, uh, at the end of April. 
March, April. Yeah, I think it stops at the end of, of April. So we are doing this in four months time, All right? January, February, March, April, yeah. We're doing this in four months time whenever it's meant to take a year. So do keep that in mind if you're beating yourself up that you're not getting through all of the exercises and whatnot. You can pause these videos, come back to them later and whatnot. Totally fine. Um, moving on. Focus on reg a regular meditation practice at least three times a week, if not daily. Again, my meditation practice right now that I've taken up for Lent is praying the rosary. It's something that not only am I praying, but I'm, I'm getting in that meditative state um, while I'm saying the words and going and whatnot. Um, and I did talk about the difference between prayer and, and meditation and whatnot. This is like meditation and prayer. It's kind of, kind of weird ground where the two like intersect and meet. Anyway, use instant magic in your daily life. Might not do that um, all the time. Uh, from time to time, I probably should get a little bit more into like, hey, I want that parking spot. Let's do this. But not promising that. Um, and neutralize unwanted thoughts and intentions. I want to say, neutralizing your own unwanted thoughts and intentions is one thing. Neutralizing everything that comes in from somebody else, yeah, not necessarily going to do it. I'm going to put up a disco ball, and that shit's going to bounce around until it goes back to the person that it came from. Anyway. And then they, he has some tips here. From now on, prepare and protect yourself and your sp space before doing any meditation. State an intention for protection and guidance. Call on your protection spirits. Burn protective incense. Draw banishing pentagrams in all directions. Yeah, I'm probably not going to do that. To be honest, that's not my style. Again, I've been doing this, what... Uh, I started in 2010, so this is going on 11 years. I'm actually just about 11 years exactly. So, yeah, probably not going to do that. Uh, to be honest, that's just not my style, and it's not um, what I've I've grown accustomed to. Um, next one is obtain a charm or symbol of protection, such as pentagram or pentacle, and consecrate it. Uh, wear during meditation and in your daily life if you desire. I have the triquetra. You may have something different. You can have a cross. You can have... Uh, I know many uh, Christopagans out there, such as myself, will have a cross and a pentacle. Totally acceptable. So, if you have a family crest or something like that, that might work too. Um, anything that has a significant meaning to you that uh, really gives you that sense of protection. You know, you're going to be consecrating it, you're going to be giving this thing a purpose of being a protection charm. So, really, it can be anything. You can say, I want this tag from Big Low T, I want this to be a protection charm. And you can enchant this, put it in your wallet, and be protected. Yes, that can totally be a thing. Um, would I use something like that? Not necessarily. Could you? Absolutely. Moving on. Next tip is um, create protection shields as needed, including ones for your home, office, and vehicle. If you have difficulty visualizing shields around other objects, drawing, imagine drawing three interlocking rings around your tar target, one horizontal, uh, with the ground and two vertical as shown in image 18, which is here. The image, um, then, then imagine the space uh, in between being filled with crystal creating a transparent shield. So basically that's what it's going to look like. And this is pretty much what it looks like with me sitting in the center whenever I uh, do the energetic circle. That's pretty much what it looks like. Um, except that is just a ball of 
you know, light and energy and protectiveness, yes. Um, and the final tip that he has here is use your shield if you feel overwhelmed by emotions and thoughts of others around you. The shield provides protection on the em empathic and mental levels as well as the psychic and physical levels. So yeah, that is chapter nine, done. Done skis. So chapter nine of the Inner Temple of Witchcraft. Again, I'm going to try to, and is this reversed? Did I just notice that? I think the image is reversed, and if it is, I do apologize for that. Um, I will be putting a link in the description below as I bump my glasses. I will put a link in the description below if you do not already have this book but have followed out this far. Anyway, um, it is by Christopher Penzat, chapter 9. Next week, join me for chapter 10. Join me on Terror Talk Tuesday. Well, actually, join me tomorrow for Crystal Paganism Sunday. Um, not sure exactly what my, um, my topic is. I have one that I've, I, I thought about doing to, di or, you know, for filming for Crystal Paganism Sunday this week, but I kind of want to give it a little bit more of, um, a well thought out, well rounded viewpoint. So I might do something else for that. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. I think that's all that I have. Um, oh, well, I gotta go through the rest of the week. Uh, join me on Tarot Talk Tuesday. We are review revealing and reviewing a deck, oddly enough, that I got very, very cheap. Um, so see which deck that is. Um, and there's something that goes along with that deck that you will want to stay in tune for for the entirety of the video. Um, also on, let's see, Witchy Wednesday. Again, I'm gonna be talking about the difference between using natural or synthetic herbs and oils. I think this is a topic that I don't, I haven't really covered yet. I mean, how important is it to use natural oils and natural incense? Um, is it important at all? And we're going to talk about some of that for Witchy Wednesday. Uh, join me on Table Talk Thursday. We have a Table Talk discussion from our Table Topics Cube. Um, and then next Saturday for Chapter 10. So until then, it has been lovely. And I actually did this video in under an hour. Fantastic. I'm so great. Anyway. Until next time, may you have love, hugs, and ladybugs. Bye-bye.